क्या ऑडियंस है क्या इसके लिए सलाम जो वॉशिंग फोर ट्वेंटी ग्राम ऑन अ डे वेन लाइफ इज बिकम इवन हार्डर फॉर गोल कीपर्स अराउंड द वर्ल्ड दी ऑल इंडिया फुटबॉल फेडरेशन हैज गिवन अस नंबर वन uh it's been a while you please since we've had a chat and i think we wanted to focus uh today on uh, the national team obviously and your time with now more than three coaches started with bob yeah um that's when your first also your third asian cup this would be yes fourth cycle third asian cup um uh, so even though your young blood you've been around for a long time Uh, how do you see the progression from from then to now, both in terms of uh, coaching styles, <clears throat> ideas that the various coaches have brought to the national team and the camp, and also players and their evolution in, in the whole process? I mean, you're, you're asking me about a timeline about yeah. for what thirty years, thirty years, and how long do you want me to answer for? Well, you can go, man. He's only given us fifteen minutes, though. <laughs> Then yeah, I think uh, like you said, uh, I've been around for some years and I've I've seen a lot of things in the national team, um, a lot of good things uh, in the last thirteen years. Oh, I think in terms of coaching and and players, I think it was different with every era. So when I joined, it was a different time in football, uh, different kind of players uh, were there. and that's why the coaching was a bit more how how you can say direct mm, and basic. yeah basic and that's what i think suited for the team as well back then um, and the team reached uh, their limit at that point when we were in the asian cup uh, in 2011 then a lot of you know uh, circling was done a lot of uh, new players were coming in in and out uh, I was also in and out. No one remembers that good. Mm. Um, but I think after that, a lot of uh, new players came in. Players who who want to represent country in the same fashion uh, as the pre predecessors did. Uh, make sure that uh, the same continuity is there in terms of how we want to play football. and with time it has become more focused on uh, keeping the ball and being very good with the ball in terms of keeping possession and being comfortable and uh, we are seeing that now with a lot of uh, good technical players coming in um, systems have changed uh, now we you know experiment with 433 4231 352 541 5, a lot of fluidity in terms of uh, systems which has come in the last Five six years, especially the last four years, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's what uh, happens when you're trying to work out what should be the right way of uh, playing for this team, this national team, and um, yeah, I mean, uh, I saw that part of uh, football with the national team, and I'm seeing this one as well, and um, like Chetty, why I'm just trying to <laughs> stay there and uh, catch up with everyone, the new ones. Yeah. What what are you seeing as the key difference with some of the younger players uh, who are coming into the scene, coming to the national team? Uh, how much is the league and and like sort of the development aspect of of those things? How much is that helping them uh, catch up? Because even this camp, there are three new uh, boys who've come for the first time: Mahesh, Rohit. Uh, so so how how is the sort of how easy is it for them to fit into a national team that already has some idea of what it wants to do? I think uh, with the introduction of the ISL and and what it has done in the last uh, years is is bring a lot of professionalism mm -hmm. in terms of how a player should be and uh, that has been a welcoming uh, sign for us as a national team because trust me 2019 se pehle before 2018 not a lot of players in the national team knew what Kinua was now everyone has kinwa on their plate mm. so that makes a big difference and uh, also the fact that in today's time uh, no one's place is fixed and no one can say that uh, 
they can be in the team 100% show shot because a lot of fluidity is there in terms of uh, replacing player selection which is good because more number of Indian players have come up uh, through the ranks and now you have two leagues basically before we had just the I league mm. now we have players coming from I league to ISL and then coming to the national team uh, which was not there before so as long as uh, they are performing on the pitch and uh, providing you know what we need uh, as a team uh, getting results it doesn't matter if new players are coming in or old ones are still there uh, with the EOC match, uh, in the time, of course, it's been hit by the pandemic and, and that's had an impact, uh, I'm sure, on how things have gone. Uh, and also, that's why it's probably taken the course that much longer to figure out maybe even who his best 11 are. Uh, but what has been the, what have been the biggest positives and, and, and what do you think uh, you as a member of the team and as someone whose position is probably you know, a main one in that setup? Uh, uh, what do you see? Hap what do you want to see happen between now and uh, December? I think obviously, uh, like you said, because of um, the unprecedented uh, pandemic which has happened all over the world, we were not able to do things the way we wanted to. Uh, obviously, looking at uh, how things can go when we get to be together for a long period of time when we have that luxury as a team to spend time together we do well like we are competitive we we can hurt teams we know uh, what our players can do we we have that sense of uh, uh, compassion and coordination when we play but obviously it's very difficult when you have you know four or five days of preparation and then you want to play because to get that coordination, it takes time. Mm. Uh, because that education is still in process for players to know about other players when they come in the national team, to know what the coach is asking. Mm. Because not a lot of players are uh, at that level of education where uh, they can get it like this. Yeah. Sunil Chetri gets it, yeah. Sandesh Chindan gets it. Yeah. Because they have been around and they know what the coach wants. So that's, I think, the key, the key difference right now. I guess, and some of it is also down to not just uh, sort of football education and technical education, but overall uh, education and exposure because... Be a bus. Yeah, or <laughs> not even. <laughs> but no, so, uh, so which actually leads me to the next couple of questions. Uh, one is, was there any sort of conversation between the guys who were likely to be in the national team uh, you know, around the time when the schedules were being discussed for the playoffs and things like that, <coughs> could have perhaps been uh, arranged. There's, there's one set of people who believes, uh, I don't know, among them, that time should be made. Priority needs to be given to the national team because mm -hmm. only then, and when, when, when the national team does well, uh, then the overall interest in football in the sport grows massively. 100%. And I, as a player, I would love uh, for that to happen. But obviously, there are limitations uh, to what we can ask for and what can happen. And that's understandable. Uh, maybe we need to work our way around it. We have a very important uh, tournament coming up, very important uh, phase of a lot of players' lives. It is as close as we can get to a major continental uh, competition. Uh, a lot of players will not have experienced an Asian mm -hmm. Cup because that is as close as you can get to the World Cup in okay. terms of the experience yeah. and I've experienced it and I know how important it is uh, when you're there that you are 100% prepared there are no doubts everyone is on the same path everyone knows what we have to do and if for that to happen uh, there are more compromises and sacrifices needed to be made to accommodate the national team there's no harm in it because like you said, if the national team does well, there is more interest, uh, Indian players get better and uh, obviously the league develops automatically when the players improve. The mm -hmm. uh, second, second part of it is that, uh, I guess given the schedule now and, and the way things are, uh, the only time to spend uh, on you know that development phase of a player, improving the levels of education, is perhaps in pre-season. Mm -hmm. uh, now, again, there are like those who say that, of course, Durand Cup needs to happen and it's an important tournament. 
but that takes time away from clubs having that long yeah. pre-season, go abroad, get more exposure, play against better teams. Because now you guys are the 50, 60 best players in the country, right? You're constantly playing against each other. The scope to improve also is only that much. 100%. 100%. But these tournaments also are important because you want to play more number of games, competitive games. Obviously, there there can be uh, ways to do it. Um, You can take examples of how things are done. For example, in England, where uh, club tournaments are happening consecutively when the league is happening yeah. because now with the league's schedule you you are having basically one game a week mm. so if you can adjust these games uh, in between you're playing more number of games at the same time you're getting the exposure that you want uh, for your pre-season as a club so if <laughs> if we set our mind to it I'm sure that uh, we can jot out a, a plan how to fix this and mm. I'm sure that uh, people High above are doing that because everyone has the same interest, which is uh, improving Indian football, and uh, that can be done once the Indian football team is doing it. Mm. So, at Bangalore, what is the kind of thought on this? Like, are you guys talking about it, and, and like through the club, maybe making some, having some conversations? <laughs> because you guys have been around; you're part of the fabric of that club now. Should we say? I the coach. I already asked the coach. Coach, are we going to England, Spain? Where are we going? Mm. And um, yeah, it's it's the club's decision. But as a player, I I know how uh, crucial that experience can be because a good preseason uh, outside of the country, playing against uh, strong oppositions can build that foundation. We have seen that. With BFC when we played uh, Villarreal and Barcelona B, mm. and uh, we saw that with Mumbai when they played the Champions League games, they built their foundation and they were almost unbeatable in the ISL. Almost. Yeah. Almost. Okay. Last one. We've been asked to wrap up uh, on on Sunil Chetri. Uh, your first Asian Cup 2011 was a time when Baichun Bhutia was at the end of his career. Yeah, he barely he got only a few minutes uh, ready to play. He's quite injured in that tournament also. Uh, Sunil now is still like at perhaps close, still still like marking it with the with the young guys. Uh, but there will be a time yeah. when we have to look ahead. Uh, in your opinion, who or where will that next striker person come from? Definitely, he'll come from India. But <laughs> who it will be and where he will be from is something even I don't know. But um, we as a as a country, we as players, we as everyone who loves sport should enjoy this journey of this man who has done incredibly well for the country in these years and uh, make sure that we are supporting him uh, through in throughout uh, because he's the Lionel Messi equivalent of uh, India and uh, I don't think he's going to be done. I'd be very disappointed if he you know, calls it a day after the Asian Cup because I see him every day in training. Yeah. And in terms of, I think it's only in terms of motivation. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a player like him at that point where he's 6% body fat and he has 8-pack abs, um, Physicality is not the problem, it's, it's just the motivation. So, my go push that my ass as a Prediction for the game against the Indian Republic? Uh, India win will be welcomed very much. I have a clean sheet to go with 100%. That. All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, like, follow, subscribe, and all that jazz. And hopefully, we'll have the, the big man back soon uh, on the show. Subscribe my channel too, also.